Hello. I'm Gail Court Shooter Gabriel Chana, and I want to discuss the men on my marriage list. I wrote this on January 20th, 2011, and I want to discuss it in a video. Brain to brain loving occurs when two minds communicate via computer satellite technology from one brain to another, and they can make love this way as well. They talk to each other and nurture each other while their bodies go through the sexual motions together in their minds, though they're physically apart. The computer automatically translates languages so that if one lover is a Russian speaker and the other an English speaker, the thoughts will be communicated in the language best understood by the recipient. So let's say Vladimir Putin is thinking his thoughts in Russian and speaking to me in Russian in his mind. I will receive those thoughts in the language I best understand, English. And then when I respond to him with my thoughts in English, he will receive my thoughts in the language he best understands, Russian. Vladimir Putin introduced me to this form of lovemaking in the spring of 2003. And Vladimir and I have been communicating and making love this way ever since. It's actually possible to build a loving and permanent relationship using this method of communication because that's exactly what's happened to Vladimir and myself. When I tried to act like I never had a relationship with Vladimir like this, and we did have a relationship like this from 2003 and onwards, Vladimir went into clinical depression. This was around 2007-2008. I will continue to have my relationship with Vladimir using this method. And if I can never have a quote unquote normal relationship with him, at least I know that I haven't deserted him and have continued to love and encourage him, even if everyone thinks I'm crazy. I will love my men using this method because it's safer for us this day, this way, and keeps me alive. If I marry Vladimir in a quote-unquote normal relationship, fine. But if not, fine. At least we get to make love, even if not in the conventional manner. So I give him encouragement. At least we're both still alive. And that's a miracle in itself, because the Jesuits are so obsessed over our love for each other. Because of this form of communication, Vladimir was able to give me the information I needed to write my conspiracy law, which I wrote from around 2003 to 2007, which I registered at the U.S. Copyright Office in Washington, D.C. My conspiracy law is a volume of laws that deal with this new technology and how it should be handled in the international courts. Vladimir Putin and Brent Spiner have, despite my objections, created a marriage list for me. This is a list of men who want to marry me and are on a waiting list of men to be my husband. I believe there are at least 40 men on the list, most of them famous. If Brent and Vladimir screen the men for compatibility with my personality using computer satellite brain reads. They started this in 2005 when, Vla when the Jesuits gave Vladimir Putin a near fatal heart attack so that he couldn't make love to me with brain-to-brain -brain loving. Vladimir said to me, because of my heart attack, I can't make love to you. And I've assigned Matthew McConaughey, who was working as an actor on the movie version of my novel, Silver Skies, at the time, to take my place for about a month. I told Vladimir, I can't do this. This isn't fair to you. Vladimir said, but you're a passionate woman, and I want your needs met while I'm unable to make love to you, so I insist. We've screened Matthew, and he's compatible with your personality and has agreed that when my health permits and I can make love to you again, I shall return. I agreed and discovered in Matthew McConaughey a thrilling lover and quite an intelligent and honorable man, despite being voted as the sexiest man alive at the time. When Vladimir returned to health and Matthew's time was up, Matthew stated, I would be interested in marrying Gail if she ever becomes available. After Matthew experienced me in 2005, he decided to formally end his relationship with Penelope Cruz, who I liked. Vladimir warned Matthew that if he went on my marriage list, he may never actually marry me, but that if something should happen to Brent 
or Vladimir that I agreed that I would only marry a man on my marriage list. Matthew said, put me on the list. I love Gail. About a year later, in 2006, the Jesuits stole Matthew's sperm and impregnated the Camilla woman using artificial insemination. And to avoid further scandal in the lying, in the lying Jesuit tabloids and because Matthew likes children, he has adopted the children born to Camilla and has played the Jesuit game in this. But this has taken an emotional toll on him, and I'm not sure what his status is on my marriage list right now. But I think he still loves me, and I continue to have a high regard for Matthew McConaughey. I'm not sure if he's actually had sex with Camilla, and if he has, I won't marry him, because it violates my moral standards. Because if he's had sex and children with Camilla through sex, I would consider him married to Camilla, and I don't like to encourage adultery. But I'm not that worried about it because I'm not committed to marry him. I remain his friend and have high regard for him. I'm not sure if I'd ever marry him even though I believe he's on my marriage list. I sense some areas where we may not be compatible. I've told all the men on my marriage list that I can't promise, I cannot promise I will marry any of them, that I would need to develop a real bond with them before I could commit to marriage. The only men I feel comfortable about marrying are actor Brent Spiner and Russian current Prime Minister Vladimir Putin. Um, there are several men on my marriage list who pretend to be married or involved with a woman when they're not really involved with that woman. In order to prevent Jesuit tabloid lies as Jesuits try to sabotage their love for me. Many of these men are widowers or divorced or just plain single but are represented with a spouse or girlfriend in the media, and they play along with this to avoid Jesuit scandals about their love for me. The men in my life have learned quickly that Jesuits have a fanatical obses obsession over my love life and that Jesuits love to sabotage the romantic interests of any influ influential man who's in love with me. I'm going to have to stop now because my 10 minutes are up, and I'm going to continue this discussion on another YouTube video.